Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show and Lady Frankenstein. Some flexibility may be required when defining female mad scientists. A few thousand years of cultural pressure informs us on a near DNA level that women are to be protected and that they are more sensitive and in tune to life and nature's patterns and vibrations. Overcoming stereotypes requires some actual effort on the part of the screenwriter, so it's the uncommon filmmaker or the canny one searching for a marketable hook who will breach the staid walls of tradition and give us a tale of a woman messing about with the natural order of things. The movie does fairly well by Roselle Bonieri, billed as Sarah Bay, who at the height of her beauty really steals your heart, spleen, liver, and all the fun bouncy bits. Her Tanya is a calculating, self-centred bitch who's willing to drive a man to murder just so she can enjoy a good-looking bonk. And who wouldn't? She has ample opportunity to hold her own against the male forces arrayed against her. For example, matching Lynch bluntness to bluntness, her icy intellectualism a strong counterpoint to his earthy vulgarity. This brief exchange helps to lend an air of ambiguity to the following events, causing us to wonder the extent to which she will use her femininity to manipulate the men around her. After appearing in films from the misleadingly titled Too Much Johnson to Tora Tora Tora, actor Joseph Cotton found his career frayed a little with the abominable Dr. Fibes, The Screaming Woman, Soylent Green and Airport 77. His last film, The Survivor, made in 1981, was notable as the first Australian production to cost $1 million. Captain Harris, played by Jane Mansfield's arm candy Mickey Hargitay, is one of the more distracting things about the movie. Not only does he seem to spend all his time either annoying Lynch or the Frankensteins, his mode of investigation seems suspiciously similar to the television detective Columbo. Right down to there's one thing I don't understand and just one more question. He has no real bearing on the events of this movie and advances the plot not one whit. He is the filler that walks like a man. Paul Muller plays Dr. Charles Marshall. A Swiss actor, he was no stranger to the exploitation game, having appeared in I, Vampiri in 1959 and numerous Jess Franco films like Count Dracula, A Virgin Among the Living Dead and Lesbian Vampires. I'll give you two guesses what that's about. The most interesting name behind the camera was the director himself, Mel Wells, who by that time had already spent over a decade working with the king of the B-movies, the great Roger Corman. Remember the manager with the outrageous accent in Little Shop of Horrors? That's Mel. As usual, everything in the known universe seems to lead back to Roger Corman. Mel's final film, 2002's Raising Dead, had exactly the opposite effect and he passed away in 2005. The plot is paced quickly enough that we rarely notice its jagged edges don't quite fit together. Tanya's notion of creating a monster to not only vindicate her father's theories, but also to clean up his mess, makes for a nice twist on the old story. If the monster is rather too obviously composed of mortician's wax, a glass eye and rubber gloves, it's at least a novel concept for the Frankenstein monster. And I should make mention of the suspiciously modern-looking hats the men wear and their amazingly fake sideburns. Nothing says 19th century like strange facial hair and obvious spirit gum. At least nice touches abound in the production design, such as a nifty display case in the laboratory containing all the body parts. And since he lacks one of those ultra-bright surgical lights with a dazzling reflector, the Baron makes do with a large mirror fronted by a row of kerosene lamps. Although this does raise the question, if Frankenstein is relying on lanterns and torches for illumination, what the hell is powering the Jacob's Ladders and all that other sparking equipment? Let's find out in the absolutely shocking conclusion of Lady Frankenstein.